All right, let's do some more interpretation of planets and signs and houses and so on. And to give you a hang of how to do it, let's use the chart of John Lennon. We'll look at the most prominent planet in John Lennon's chart, which is his moon. John Lennon's moon is in Shravan Nakshatra, and his ascendant is Revati. Revati is symbolized by a drum, Shravana symbolized by an ear. This illustrates the principle that I was bringing up since the beginning of this video series, that you always have to look behind you when you're interpreting. What have you already interpreted? You've already, hopefully, if you've been following this structure that I've been setting up for you, you're interpreting the bigger things first and then going down step by step into more and more specific details. So the things that are behind you are the bigger context of the chart. So you should have already ha looked at the Ascendant Nakshatra, Revati. Now when you go and look at the most important planet and you see that it's in Shravana, a light bulb should go off in your head. Here's an ear. The moon is in the ear, and the ascendant is in the drum. I, it, it wouldn't be too hard to predict that this person is at least an artist, right? Involved in arts, like sound, involved in music. So the person's a musician, obviously. Very important musician. Now, Lenin's moon is right at the beginning of Shravana, which is where there is a special nakshatra called Abhijit. Abhijit as the Nakshatra Sutra of Taittiriya Brahmana reveals, Abhijit is actually the later portion of Uttarashada. The final portion of Uttarashada is the ultimate victory, Abhijit. And it does spill just slightly over the border of Shravana. So Lenin's moon is really right at the apex, pinnacle of Abhijit. So that would help you make an interpretation that here's a fantastically successful person. Now mark this point that we haven't just picked out a planet in his chart and said, oh look, this planet is in Abhijit, at the pinnacle of Abhijit. Even though if somebody does have any planet at the pinnacle of Abhijit, that's certainly worth something important. But that's not what's going on here with Lenin's chart. This is not just any planet. By our calculations, which I showed you in previous videos how to do, we figured out that the most important planet in his chart is the moon. It's the most prominent planet. Now we're looking at the moon, and that most prominent planet in this chart is at the end of Abhijit. And on top of that, if I do a video and show you how to do Raj Yogas, we'll definitely use John Lennon's chart, because it's got Raj Yogas to the max. And that goes really well with having an Abhijit nakshatra. Okay? So he's a fantastically successful person. That's an easy thing to interpret. And he's a musician. That's an easy thing to interpret because of the combination between Revati, the drum, on his ascendant, and Shravana, the ear, where his moon is. So for moon and Shravana, you interpret stuff like likes to listen, likes to hear, likes information, likes communication. Now this will blow people's minds who haven't followed my other video series about the use of the tropical zodiac in Vedic astrology with sidereal nakshatras. But currently, with the current Ayanamsha, Shravana nakshatra coincides with Aquarius. So that means Lenin's moon, looking at it through the signs, not looking at it through the sidereal nakshatras, but looking at it through the tropical signs, the signs which are tropical inherently, his moon is Aquarius. Aquarius is the water pourer, the server the water server, the water boy. Moon is planet of desires, right? So there's a clash there. Moon is desires, I want, and, and Aquarius is the servant. I don't want, you want, I supply. I give you the water. So this would be symbolized as probably indicating a clash between personal desires and desires to serve others. Lennon has a phenomenal moon, so he's going to be able to do both at the same time. He's going to be able to fulfill his personal desires to be famous and the entertainer and the focus of everybody's love, and at the same time to do great things for society by being that entertainer and beloved focus of everybody's attention. 
Okay. Um, moon with the desires, tons of desires, and Aquarius with the humility to it and the servitude to it, it indicates kind of simpler desires, actually. It's more Spartan, minimal ambitions. And so Lenin was became a fabulously wealthy person, but never lost touch with that blue-collar side of him. And he was always the working-class hero. He was always the person. Even though he had his skyscraper apartments, he would still walk on the sidewalk. So Moon in Aquarius has that tendency of taking the desires out of that sophisticated elitist realm and putting them down into the masses. So that would also indicate, you know, desire to be loved by the masses. And one way that the Moon and Aquarius get along quite well is that Aquarius is eclectic. It likes to examine a lot of different things because it's an air sign and it belongs to Saturn. The Saturn is an examiner, critiquer, and the air goes everywhere. So, you know, I think also Lenin is a classic eclectic. Unlike George Harrison, who was really more clear cut into Indian philosophy, into Vedic philosophy. Lenin never committed to any of that stuff. Always remained eclectic. Okay, so there you have an assessment of the moon in Aquarius. Is it absolutely exhaustive? No. But does it need to be absolutely exhaustive? No. You just need to kind of prime your mind for what the moon is like in Aquarius because now you're going to want to look at the house the moon is in. And then you refine your thoughts about the moon in Aquarius based on the house that the moon is in and vice versa. So don't try to tighten all the screws. You do this too if you're just putting something, installing some light fixture in your house or something. If you tighten the first screw all the way, you're just going to give you troubles later on. Better to just get it a little bit tight, go and put in the next screw, get that a little bit tight, get the third one in there a little bit tight. Then everybody's in place and you can really tighten it down all the way. Same thing when you're interpreting a chart. Don't go and drill all the gold out of this gold mine first in the first thing you look at. Just get your bearings on that one, get it down, tied down a little bit. Go to the next thing, get a little bit, tied down on every little factor in, that you want to pull together for your interpretation. Then when you've got them all in place, then you can tighten them all down. We should take that moon in Aquarius, which is eclectic, right? And put it back, look backwards, look back to the fact that he has an Aries ascendant. So he's going to be very independent in his eclectic research of the of life. So Lenin's moon in Aquarius is in his 11th house because he has an Aries ascendant, which is also quite important to understanding him. He's got an Aries ascendant. So it's going to tell us something more about his eclectic moon, right? Right. 11th house is the house of what we can enjoy, the stuff that we can enjoy. So beautiful objects as the 11th house. Uh, art is therefore objects of art, performance of art, performance of music, performance of dance, theater, all that stuff is the 11th house. So moon, which is the creative mind in the 11th house, really indicates a, a ability to create or enjoy beautiful things. So it's a, a good placement for artists. Now take that look back if you look back and you see some nakshatras or ascendants that have nothing to do with arts then you have to give some other interpretation but in lenin's case we have a moon in the 11th house we look back at the nakshatras it's revati the drum and shravana the ear so those nakshatras are giving us a background of tons of music and artistic talent and now here the most important planet is in the 11th house it's the moon in the 11th house so, at this point in interpreting this chart, even if it was blind, we would be really pretty confident to say, this person must be a musician. There's a clash between having the moon in the 11th house and the moon in Aquarius. The moon in the 11th house likes enjoyable objects. The moon in the Aquarius is Spartan or minimal. So there's going to be a tension between liking to enjoy, liking pleasures, but also liking to be simple. So probably Len Lenin had a lot of dichotomy in his heart of wanting to be a simple down-to-earth 
person, yet also wanting to be famous and important and rich. You see, we, we know these people as stars, so we only know them from the outside. But when you study their chart, you can see them from the inside. This is a person that's into pleasure, but also likes to be simple and Spartan. This is a person that's into arts, but also likes to be down to earth. This is so you get this kind of artist figure who's creating art that's folky, down to earth, basic, appeals to common people. Really, his song, The Working Class Hero, summarizes his most prominent planet. On top of that, since it's the moon in Aquarius in the 11th house, you know that it's the fourth lord. And the fourth lord is your happiness. So happiness is to be found in the 11th house when the fourth lord is in the 11th house. So he's got an inclination to find happiness by enjoying beauty or creating beauty. So put everything together now. Now you tighten all the screws. The whole background is musical because of Shravana and Revati. And, and, and intelligent. Why intelligent? Because Revati is really intelligent. Shravana is very intelligent. And his Navamsha ascendant is Virgo. So he's this intelligent musician. That's the background nature of who he is. Now he's going to see himself as a servant because his moon is in Aquarius. He's going to see himself as a public servant, somebody who's going to do good for others, bring water to other people. And that moon is in the 11th house. So he's going to see himself as the person who serves people through art. And it's the fourth Lord there in the 11th house. So he's going to have a talent for performing and enjoying arts and also for acquiring money as a result. But there's going to be a clash between him being catapulted into this position of fame and fortune, but having a heart which is down to earth. Okay, so I hope that was an eye opener about how astrology can really work with simple, basic techniques. All you really have to do is know what the planets represent, what the signs represent, what the houses represent, what the nakshatras represent. And then you just have to have some system for what order to in interpret them in and how to put the soup of all the ingredients together. So I hope this was helpful to giving you some examples about how to put it all together. We'll do a couple more because it's so crucial, it's so essential. Let me know in the comments if there's specific individuals whose charts you'd like me to use as examples in the next few videos. So what I do in my complete chart assessment, if you want, if you go to my site, victorcara.com slash R2, you'll go straight to the complete chart assessment report. So what I give people there is all the details in the right order, in the right priority. So what you've been seeing in the graphics throughout the video have been graphics from the complete chart assessment. If John Lennon ordered one from me, he would have got that one. Okay, subscribe, thumbs up, all that nice stuff, and I'll see you next time.